In this video presentation I would like to explain why people should or should not choose paganism. So, paganism is kind of a modern word because it used to be simply the normal or traditional religion of yeah, pretty much all peoples all over the world. Paganism usually has multiple yeah, gods, goddesses or archetypes. The essence of paganism is that we realize that we as a single human cannot be everything. Uh, unlike Leonardo da Vinci, we're not a homo universalis who has all qualities, all powers within themselves. Usually we're quite limited. We have a few things we're good at, lots of things we're bad at. And the essence of the pagan tradition is basically to say like, that is okay. We can specialize. I don't have to be able to do everything, know everything in my current lifetime. I just need to find my niche, my role in the world, my place where I belong within society. And other people will have their places where they belong. And if everybody does what they are supposed to do, then the whole of society will function. So I cannot, as a single person, be yeah, complete, be everything. But as a society, we can be whole, we can be complete. But we have to learn how to fulfill our role, how to fill our niche to the best of our capability. And for that we need role models. So the most fundamental role models are basically, are you a male or a female? What are male or female qualities to develop? And over time, what has been identified as male or female has switched a lot. So is war man's business or woman's business? Just depends on time and culture. But some things are more universal, like fertility, homemaking, these tend to be considered to be more feminine and usually things which have to do with some form of discipline tend to be identified with more male things. So you could say that anything which has to do with a cycle tends to be more associated with the feminine powers in paganism and anything which tends to be more linear tends to be associated more with male powers. And there is, of course, various approaches to things. So, for instance, you have the goddess of the hunt, Artemis, and you have the god of the hunt, Allah. And it's also very much about the male or the female approach. So the male approach is very much, there is my goal, and that's what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to get there. So how to focus yourself, how to create that kind of movements, remove all distractions, become one with your goal and ultimately by identifying becoming one with the goal you move towards it and you become it. Now I'm using the god of the hunt as an example but it is true for all gods. Flip, so, flip side is basically using the feminine approach. And the feminine approach is very much uh, accepting that you're part of a cycle and at any moment in a certain position in a cycle. So within the goddess of the hunt uh, framework, you have the part where you are in a way searching. You're searching for food. And at this time, you need to develop your sensitivity, your knowledge, your intuition. Then there is the time that you are stalking your food. And at this time, you need to practice your ability to become one with your surroundings, to be unobtrusive, to be unnoticed, to be adaptable. And finally, there will be the time where you yourself will be hunted. And then you need to use your environment to your advantage. You need to use your wisdom, which you have built up during your other hunts, to survive, to sustain you, to make sure that you can escape. You are the one who is hunting you. So. It's about the same thing about the hunt, but it is in a very feminine way. And so most roles in life can be 
yeah, followed in a male way or in a feminine way. And if you choose for a paganistic approach, it's very also important to not just to find what gods or goddesses uh, portfolios attract to you. Are you interested in war? Are you interested in art? Are you interested in hunt, in nature, uh, in the sea, in the mountains, in trees? But also, do you have a male or a female approach to it or strategy to do it? It is very possible for a woman to worship a male god or come counterwise for a man to worship a female god. There's nothing wrong with that. It is just how you want to develop yourself, how you want to position yourself in that process. So, for instance, you have gods and goddesses of wisdom. So, if you have a god of wisdom, it is about building up knowledge, having a goal, finding out the key to achieving that goal. Well, if you have a more feminine goddess, it is about not so much wrestling with the knowledge, but allowing yourself to be inspired, to utter a theory, see how it works. If it doesn't work, you have retract it, rebirth it, and come with a new version, and new version, and slowly but surely in cycles, move forward, up and down, finally to get to a higher level of knowledge. The basic reason for you to choose a paganistic approach is that you find that these gods and goddesses or uh, saints inspire you, that you are benefiting from having an idol or an example. But in a way the god or the goddess is the ultimate example. They are not just a human who is very good at it and a good teacher. They actually carry the knowledge of humanity itself. They are the teachers of humanity itself. And every great master that ever lived is but a simple student to these gods or goddesses who are in a way embody the embodiment of the perfection of the art. And you can work with such a god or goddess for many lifetimes and still have much to learn. And ultimately, by working with such a god or goddess, you come closer and closer to that level of perfection. And ultimately, you will turn from a student into a teacher for your fellow man. So, as a priest, you have a role as a student to the god, but also as a teacher to the humans, who are also interested in your particular trade, in your particular god or goddess, your niche in society where you are developing yourself in. So if you find that you have a very strong identification with a role in society or a job you want to do, you might be passionate about art or leadership or homemaking, then it is very nice to have such a wealth of knowledge to support you. Of course, here you can also decide to be more of a channel for the powers of the God to be more inspired or to be more you know, experimenting, developing yourself. But with the God or the Goddess as the ultimate touchstone, like nowadays we ask, what would Jesus do? In paganism we would ask, ah, what would Odin do? What would Freya do? What would Mars do? And Try to find a pantheon which appeals to you. And you can also use gods and goddesses from different pantheons. Really, they don't mind. Because usually it is the same power, the same warrior, the same hunter, the same wisdom which has come to all people of the earth. But just in culturally slightly different guises with slightly different associations, depending on the culture they manifested themselves through or in. But if you focus on what is beyond, the power which is slumbering in humanity, then you will find that the true god or goddess is not about culture, it's not about male or female, it is a universal power which has thus been used in a more simple human form to make it easier for us to comprehend, to relate to it, to create stories about it, which are instructive to us which are transformative to us. So if you go into paganism, also storytelling, reading fairy tales, 
looking at other archetypes are a very important part of your path. I hope it will appeal to you. If not, there are several other choices to be looked at.